Okay, so, I mean, uh, you're, I, I want you to think, as a former player, uh -huh. you can get more money in Toronto, but it is Canada. Yeah. Uh, Clippers got a bunch of young guys, but not another star. Or hell, I can go to the Lakers. They're knights. I can just take the night off and watch LeBron and AD play. Mm -hmm. Where would you go? The challenge is, it's, you know, Kawhi has won in San Antonio. As probably, we didn't know what kind of player he was going to be. But he was surrounded by greatness with Tony Parker, Ginobili. Right. Of course, Duncan. Gets to Toronto, well, you're never going to win in Canada. You don't know what's going on. Do you really want to be here? And he's won, okay? Now it's this whole thing about, okay, where do you want to go next? And what Kawhi, the beauty about Kawhi is that he doesn't talk, so we don't have a clue Not on a what's going on. Me personally, you know, I like to be comfortable in a place that I know people, okay, that I feel that I can continue to do what I love to do in a way that makes sense. Now, with Kawhi, is it – that he wants to get back to the West Coast? Probably. I don't know. I think the perfect fit is still in Toronto because of what they've been able to do, how he's been able to win. He owns a country, basically. Now, it may not be as many people as, as it is in California, but you got a country behind you. So from a legacy perspective, I don't know, but I, I, I always try to get into the mindset of a player, but it's extremely tough because you don't know the thought process and kind of what drives and motivates them. Yeah, a lot of people have said he'll do a one plus one. Like, he'll come back for a year mm -hmm. and then a player option. So then he can kind of test the waters. Well, well, here's the thing, too. But I think a player, and I can't speak for him, knows what they want to do. Okay? Now, probably with the Lakers, they wanted to dig a little bit deeper to understand the dynamics of the front office because that still was in question with yeah. Jeannie and everybody yeah, else. Yeah, Cole, I wanted to know about that. And he wanted to know. So you got to give him that credit. But I still think he understands – where he wants to be. The question is, if you're with the Clippers, you don't have that second guy. What does that mean? Now, the load management is an issue because – You can't go you, to L.A. and do that in you, the West. You, you can't, can't do Jimmy, it. Jimmy, you well, take 20 games off, you're not making the playoffs. Well, here's the thing. You can probably – you have more leeway to do it with the Lakers than you do with the Clippers. Or the Raptors. Or the Raptors. You don't have it. So, But even with the Raptors, you have something built in where in the East, I think with the teams that kind of step back a little bit, you can – navigate through that. Maybe you don't get home court, but you're in the playoffs and now you got a chance. With the Clippers, there's no way that you can take off 20 games. Absolutely, but I think you can with the Lakers. I was thinking about this. So Kawhi Leonard talks to Magic and he asks him one question. We had two, but the mm -hmm. first one was, did you try to get me in San Antonio? Yeah. Kawhi Leonard was overlooked by Pac-12 schools. Mm -hmm. And it bothered him. Then he goes to San Antonio and he didn't choose Toronto. He was traded, traded there. Yep. This is his first recruiting trip. This may be one of these that's as simple as who shows him the most love. Yeah. And it's my turn to make a decision. Okay. Right. I, I remember when um, Houston waved me and uh, what well, they tried to trade me to New Orleans. Okay. And at that point, I was just like, you know what? I'm doing what I want to do. I don't care what it costs. I'm not going somewhere somebody's sending me. I want to make a choice of what's going to happen for the rest of my career actually took a hit from a penalty perspective pay-wise, but I ended up in Phoenix. And I was able to get to the playoffs and have a great run. But that was the moment, moment I took control of my career. And I didn't worry about what else was going on. And to me, that gave me the freedom to finally take control, which I didn't have you know, since I got drafted. So Kawhi is in that situation, a great point. Well, now I got an opportunity where, okay, I didn't really choose to go to San Antonio, didn't choose to go to Toronto. I had really no choice to go to San Diego State because a lot of other schools didn't want me. Yeah, Pac-12 wouldn't offer. But now I have an opportunity to say this is where I want to be for the remainder or the next four or five years of my career. Yeah, it, it is interesting about the East. The bottom of the East is so bad. Mm -hmm. He can take 22 games off, which, by the way, that's like the thing he likes to do, right? Mm -hmm. You can. The, Toronto's still a playoff team. I'd argue without Kawhi, they're still a playoff yeah, team. In the East, yes. Um, Lakers without Kawhi are probably still a playoff team. The West, Utah's better. Denver will be better. Yep. Portland's going to be good. Um, and by the way, do you go if you if you're Kawhi and go to the Clippers? The culture there is one for all, all for one. Yeah, you taking off 15 games. I mean, they would allow they it. Would allow it. They but, would allow it. But but it's more ramifications for that too. And, and you have to keep in mind, got, those teams that you talked about were already good teams that improved. Denver, from the perspective, they got a year older. Thank you. And that was the big thing versus Portland was their youth and how to win. Portland knew that they needed to have some size inside. 
some other kind of defenders on the perimeter and guys who can knock down shots. So those in Utah, heck of a job of what they've done out Utah there. Utah and Denver will absolutely be better oh, next year. No, no question. So the margin for error in the room, like even with the Lakers, if you get those three together, again, once you get in the playoffs and you're healthy, you got to give them the edge, okay? But even in the East, and you're talking about this, if you miss those games as a key guy, especially with the Clippers, it's hard to recover when you're in a sixth, seventh, eighth seed and you got to play some of the top tier teams back, in that first round. Back to back. back if to you're back. a fifth, sixth seed, it's back to back road series. That's what I'm saying. That's rough. That's rough. Uh, Jim Jackson joining us. Uh, Vegas loves KD to the Nets. Yep. Joy loves KD to the Nets. I think it's Kevin Durant in one year after the injury mm-hmm. coming back, not, you know, not as good, but really good, and playing with a ball centric guard who can be tough. <laughs> I don't, I don't see it as just this. You know, I don't even think if Kawhi goes to the Lakers, I think their bench is weak. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think winning is easy as we think. I, KD to the Nets, Kyrie to the Nets, DeAndre Jordan to the Nets. Is it a title team? Contention depending on how those young guys kind of filter out and grow. But winning is never easy when you get personalities that come together that never play. Look at LeBron and what happened in Miami. Who's they, a guy that you thought you'd play well with and didn't? Um, Tracy McGrady. I, I do. Two different personalities, though. You know, because I, I offshoot for me was I can defend, I can score, but I can set things up for him, but it just didn't work out. You know, and, and to me, what, here's the thing about KD. One, I think the injury itself with him, because he's not overly explosive in the way he plays, doesn't affect him as much as it would be as a player that was just lights out jumping out the gym. Because his game can be manufactured to pull up jump shots, catch and shoot, in transition, doing little things. So even if he's not the KD that we saw before the injury, that 80% is still better than yeah. you know 90% of the league. Right. So I think that'll be fine. The question is, go, is it a good move for KD? And I always say this, Colin, what's pers- personally, what do you want? Does that make you happy? If that makes you happy, then it's a good move for you. Now, you got to deal with the ramifications of whatever happens, okay? He went to Golden State. There's been questions about his legacy, and did you really deserve to win it? Because you, that's, a, that's something he has to deal with. But it gave him something, two finals MVPs and two championships. Cemented his legacy. So what do you – What always, matters to you? Always quick like, – Colin, for you, you were at your other employer. Yeah. Great tenure there. Yeah. You had an opportunity to come in. I'm sure people were saying, now you're crazy for going over there. Yeah. Why are you going? You, you got this made. But now you made, you, it was something inside of you that said, you know what? I need something different. I just wanted to work with Joy Taylor. Oh, eventually. that's what it was? I, I don't blame you. I got you. But, no, you, I, I, but you know what I'm saying? You no, know what no. I mean? I mean, we all, we're all driven by different stuff. I will say this about KD. He's going to be a top 20 player. You can't, no you can't take, you can't take any of that stuff away mm-hmm. from him. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.